Oof. It's high, isn't it? He stood showing as Nelson's going to ground Jim Curtin. Certainly isn't happy, the Philadelphia coach, with that challenge. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Instant Replay, presented by Cheez-Its. I'm your host, Charlie Davies, and I'm with my main man, Andrew. Oh, uh, Stu Holden. Let's no, no, go, no, 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 no. Yes. Welcome. We're ready to rock, baby. Instant Replay. I've got the special uh, orange finger here to give you the verdict on these calls. I'm ready to rock, Chuck. Let's get it, baby. Let's go. We start in the six with the undefeated Union taking on Toronto FC. Kai Wagner has the ball in the corner, and here comes Jaden Nelson. You can hear on the broadcast Wagner screaming as Nelson comes barreling in two feet up. Alex Chilowitz, the center referee, shows yellow. Stu, what do you think on this one? I think that Alex Chilowitz should have had some help here from the VAR booth because Look, Jaden Nelson comes with the studs showing extended leg. To me, it meets the criteria for a red card with excessive force and endangering the safety of an opponent. There could be an argument and maybe why VAR didn't get involved for glancing in the way he didn't necessarily catch full contact on the shin, but that to me is endangering the safety of an opponent. And Chuck, I think that should have been a red card. Stu, I'm with you. At first glance, I thought automatic red because you look at the positioning of Jaden Nelson's leg. It is high. It's above the knee. In in this case, for me, that's a straight red. It's a straight red. I know he didn't maybe catch him, and it looks like Kai Wagner anticipated, so he lifted his leg up, and so that's why we saw the yellow. But in my opinion, Jaden Nelson should have seen red. We stay at BMO Field. It's tied 1-1. It's later on in the first half. And the union's Daniel Gazdag whips in a corner that is cleared out to Kai Wagner, who strokes it in into the net past Alex Bono. Philly up 2-1, but not so fast. Alex Chilowitz is called to the monitor, and the goal is called off. Julian Carranza is deemed to interfere with the play. Therefore, an offside player interfering with the play, no goal. Stu, what say you? I say this is the correct call to pull this one back. The strike from Wagner, it's a beauty. But, as you said, Carranza is blocking Alex Bono's view. I know there was some Toronto FC players in there as well, but he was in an offside position and impacted the play and impacted Bono's ability to anticipate and to make that save, blinding his view. Correct call for me in that that goal was overturned and a good job from VAR. Well said, Stu. Let's move on to the next one. Well, let's head over to Allianz Field now, Charlie. We're Minnesota United. We're taking on the Colorado Rapids in the 44th minute. It was 1-0 Minnesota. Diego Rubio thought he had equalized not so fast. The goal was called for offside. It then went to VAR, and it was deemed that Debasi had made a deliberate attempt to play the ball. If you see there carefully, he gets the slightest little touch before it gets to Rubio. He rolls the ball in the back of the net. VAR intervenes. It was 1-1. Do you agree with the call? Stu, letter of the law. When a defender tries to attempt to play the ball, even if the attacker is in offside position, it is deemed a play and the goal should stand, which it did. So well done by the officiating crew to get this one right. Well, speaking of that officiating crew, we're going to stay in Minnesota because there was an involvement with Jack Price, who was issued a direct red card for a challenge allegedly from behind on Luis Amaria. And Chris Penso goes to his pocket, gives a red card and a very quick intervention from VAR at that point. He goes to the monitor, comes back, wipes off the red card and ends up giving Price a yellow. What say you? Right call? Stu, I have to give Kevin Terry Jr., the VAR official in this match, a ton of credit because at first glance, I think Chris Penso saw a challenge from behind and gave the red card to Jack Price. But when you get a closer look, Price came around and the tackle fell short from being a serious foul play. The tackle did not have excessive force and the point of contact was not with the studs into the Achilles and I actually believe there wasn't any contact. To me, at worst, this was reckless, and I think the VAR did a good job to get in Penso's ear to rectify this clear and obvious error. Good job to the full crew. We head to the nation's capital where DC United are up 2-0. Ola Kamara got a yellow card for his after his first goal, which he took off his jersey. Now at the end of the first half in extra time, he makes this foul on Driussi, which 
then sees Tori Penso pull out a yellow card, his second of the match, which resulted in a red card. And that would be detrimental as Austin FC would come back to score three goals in 10 minutes, the last 10 minutes of the match to win 3-2. This was a pretty obvious one. You get a yellow card for taking your shirt off. You get a second yellow for pulling down a player as he's entering the box. For me, they got this call right. Uh, Charlie, here's the lesson for you out there, kids. If you're going to get a yellow for taking your shirt off, don't even try to tackle anybody the rest of the game because that is what could potentially happen. You end up costing your team the game. So while you scored in the goal, your team ends up losing 3-2 and you get to miss the next game. All right, Charlie, let's head over to my former team, the Houston Dynamo, taking on the Portland Timbers in a 0-0 match. But the Dynamo went down a man in the 74th minute when Tine Hadebe received his second yellow card for this challenge on Jimmy Chara. He picked up his first yellow in the first half. I personally don't think this is enough for a yellow card. Yes, there's a bit of contact on Chara, but to me, the foul is fairly innocuous and not clear enough to say that this was unsporting behavior. What do you think, my friend? Stu, you read my mind. I think teenage Hadebi was running towards the sideline. This wasn't even a ball that was in behind where you would have seen Jimmy Chara making a run at goal or running towards the attacking half or attacking third. In this case, it's a foul by the sideline. For me, this is not enough to get a second yellow card in this match, but it's a lesson learned for the young center back. Well, let's head out to Bank of California Stadium in the last match of the MLS weekend between LAFC and Sporting Kansas City. Sporting Kansas City leading 1-0 on the road. A ball inside their own box. It pops up in the air. Out comes Tim Melia to grab it, but a little bit of contact between Mamadou Fall and Arango. The ball ends up in the back of the net. LAFC think they've scored, but wait. The foul is whistled for a foul on Melia in the net. Charlie, do you think this was the right call to bring this back and disallow the goal for LAFC? Editor Phil, hit me one time. Look as you see the balls in the air. Arango, as well as his LAFC teammate, Mamadou Fall, are not focused on the ball. Every player has the opportunity to challenge for the ball. Everyone's entitled to making a, a play towards the goal. But in this case, both players are focused on Timmy Melia. They're coming at Tamilia to make contact with the keeper first. And for me, that is the easy target to say, look, guys, this is a foul. This is not an attempt to play the ball. You're playing the man. You're playing the keeper. And you cannot do that. I've been in many instances where I'm going up 50-50 and I still get called for the foul. Of course, 100% right. Well done by the officiating crew. I'm with you in that I think oftentimes goalkeepers get the benefit of the doubt in these calls. In any type of touch, you see them flailing. Even in this case, Melia is making an honest attempt to try and grab the ball. And the key is, as you said, Charlie, watch Mamadou Fall's eyes. His eyes are on the positioning of Melia, trying to get contact on him, knowing that he cannot compete with Melia going up to grab that with his hands. That was the right call and kept LAFC off the score sheet for a moment. They ended up going and scoring three more anyway, so it didn't even matter. Preach! Now that's it for this edition of Instant Replay. Presented by Cheez-Its, we killed it. My man Stu Holden filled in for Andrew Weeby. Andrew, enjoy enjoy your vacation because your boys are still holding down the fort. Remember, if you see something, say something. We out. We out. Wait. Uh, what's the saying? And as our good friends always used to say, see you next see time. You next time.